The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of Off the Hook Sports. Objective insight, expertise, top guests. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off the Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Also available on offthehooksports.com. I compute and obey. Now to Dave Hooker. Ready. All right, we got a lot of people on board, so go ahead and smash that like button. Why? Because, wow, a nice calm weekend got a little crazy. We got a football team to build, kids, and going to do so right here with what Josh Heupel got done over the weekend. Two commitments, one expected in Lance Hurd, and then a surprise and a possible Polynesian connection that could reap benefits for the balls in a couple of different ways. So please hit that like button. We're going to give you some insight into these prospects and what happened during their visits and why they're such key pickups for Tennessee. Also on the program, George McIntyre will announce his decision. This just in, he's going to be a ball. Okay, so we're going to talk a lot about George McIntyre and give you some insight into that that you won't be able to get anywhere else. But first, we've got a lot to talk about before we even get to him. He's a huge pickup, one of the top quarterbacks in his class. But uh, Lance Hurd uh, commits from uh, LSU. He's a transfer, one of the top tackles or prospects, for that matter, uh, on the transfer board. Jackson Moy transfers as well from Stanford. We'll have the George McIntyre mention as well. Not just a mention. We'll cover that extensively. Uh, Balls continue to dominate the Polynesian Bowl. I think there might be a... an ethnicity pipeline. Is that a weird phrase? Uh, Deion Sanders is whining and Tennessee basketball. I'm telling you, Dalton connect is not just a good player. He's special as a special player. So over the weekend, a lot of people talked about comparing the Jeremy Pruitt and the um, Nick Saban retirement. We talked about that days ago. So if you want to hear the first breaking stuff, it's right here. If you want to hear the best takes, It's right here. So hit the like and subscribe button. We greatly appreciate that. Also, Lane Kiffin apparently appreciated uh, my open letter of apology to Hendon Hooker. He retweeted it. So I'm sure our analytics will be fantastic since he has like five kajillion followers. But I can't remember the last time. First of all, Caleb Calhoun, how are you, sir? I'm good. How are you doing, Dave? I'm well. I can't remember the last time an SEC head coach has retweeted out a story. That was strange. Yeah, that's... um. That is Lane Kiffin at his best, though, because we talked about it yesterday on the phone. I don't think Lane Kiffin sleeps. The dude is either recruiting, coaching, or on Twitter trolling all the time. I mean, it's like, that's pretty much it. Yeah, and um, I think it was also a hint that, hey, we he heard us criticize him last week that they might be out of money. Just a reminder that, hey, we uh, I'm, I'm out there listening. At least that's that's my theory. I mean, All we right, were trending very much for seeing that last week. So if we were trending, he probably saw it. Yes, it is today's tough question right now. And it's brought to you by our good friend Don Self, your State Farm agent in the Chattanooga area. It is on right now, the YouTube page. And you got three options, a lot of votes already. So vote there. Because it's today's tough question. Today's tough question. Take a side. Take a stand. The Dave Hooker Show. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. Okay. Tennessee football. With a monster weekend in recruiting. With two commitments and another one that is about to pop at any second. Was Josh Heupel playing possum in recruiting? Here are your options, Caleb Calhoun. A, yes, he knew what was coming. Two, no, things just fell into place. Or two, no, it was all planned. So either he was fortunate, he had it figured out, 
or he just knew it. So where where do you stand on those those three? Oh, he knew it was coming. He knew it was coming. Tennessee has some NIL um, things they're trying to figure out, and Josh Heupel has basically been using NIL to pick up meticulously in the transfer portal for returning talent and for specific players. So I think I think he knew it was coming the whole time. Everybody was freaking out, and Josh Heupel was super calm the entire time. I don't think he oh, – I think he knew Hurd was coming. I think he knew he'd get McIntyre, but let's be honest, that's not an immediate impact player. I, I think Moy was probably a little bit – well, I, I, I know for a fact from talking to people, that was a little bit surprising that would pop that quick. I mean, Moy would, told some reporters, hey, I'm, I'm going to make this announcement on social media to give you a little bit of insight. Guys don't usually do that that have uh, things figured out. So I think that was a surprise. I do. I'm. I know I'm supposed to take a side. I'm going to say things fell into place uh, because of Moy, uh, quite frankly. And with McIntyre, I believe that Tennessee benefited from the Alabama fiasco that's going on with Nick Saban's retirement. So I'm going to say things fell into place, except for Hurd. Tennessee knew Hurd was coming all along. But I don't know that McIntyre pulls the trigger right now, even though he was a strong Tennessee lean, if everything's peachy in Alabama, which it's not. Tuscaloosa is an absolute fiasco. That might be true. Um, but we again, we're saving McIntyre because we're going to cover his commitment live a little later. Um, but yes, he will be evolved, but he has not committed yet. So I want people to know that as, as we speak on this live, he has not committed yet. So, right. but we just know what's happening. Um, so just, but with, I think I think the link, the Nick Saban thing absolutely helped McIntyre. It will it will turn out that that helped with Alabama. But the big thing was Lance Hurd because hype was all in on 2024, as I've said. And so right now it's all about 2024. All right. Well, here we go. Let's start talking about the big weekend player by player and give you a breakdown, give you what I've been hearing from both on campus and also – uh, what I've been hearing from some some scouts and some assistant coaches. It is time for Four Downs, and it's brought to you by our friends at Dynasty Spas, as uh, Dynasty Spas in Athens is fantastic. Four Downs brought to you by Dynasty Spas, the most comfortable spas made in the United States of America, right here in East Tennessee. Drop in for the all-new showroom in Athens, Dynasty Spas, perfect for all four seasons. Four Downs presented by Off the Hook Sports. All right, I mentioned Off the Hook Sports. Get $250 off any spa. I'm sorry, $500 off any spa. That's uh, DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com, DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com. I'll tell you more here momentary, but momentarily, but let's get to four downs. Man, it's almost like it's uh, cold in my house, almost like the heat ran out or the gas ran out because my mouth's not moving normally. Uh, Coop, before we jump in the hot tub with you, what should we do? Cooper Mays here. Hit like and subscribe. Do it, Coop. All right, here we go. Coop here, first down. All right, so... We're not surprised by Hurd at all. I think you would agree with that. But let me ask you this question. Where, in terms of impact on first down, does this prospect in Lance Hurd rank among the prospects that Hypo has brought in? Caleb Calhoun, you say? So we're not counting people who were brought in for Hypo like Hendon Hooker. Um... Correct. These are just guys that Hypo brought in. So if you look at it in terms of a five-star coming out of high school, you include Brew McCoy, you include the five stars that Tennessee has gotten on their own, and Aniko, for instance, and you, you go down the line, you're talking about roughly six, seven. The midterm list officially just came out, so we'll have a column up of guys that need a hit. So, But as far as five-star prospects we're talking about a half dozen or so so herd would be one of those coming out of high school but he's a transfer and could theoretically play immediately he's not as big as nico but is he as big as any other prospect that tennessee has brought in that would include a mike Matthews. wait 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 wait, wait. you're gonna name people and mess up my ranking dave sorry you go you go my bad <laughs> wow okay no he's fourth he's fourth Okay, give um, give it to me. There we go. Nico's number one, clear cut number one. Clear. 
Brew McCoy is a clear cut number two. I don't think there's any question. I don't think Tennessee goes 11 and two without Brew McCoy in 2022. Now, are you factoring um, in the known factor or just coming into school? Because we know Brew McCoy's a, a good player. We've seen enough before he got hurt. Are you factoring that in or are you just say walking in the door? I'm saying walking in the door. Brew McCoy's number two, I think. Um, and Brew McCoy was a starter day one when he walked in. They, he was either going to be this number two or the number one, and he became the number one when Cedric Tillman went down. But he was that much of a known factor immediately. My number three is quite honestly, and not because of what I, it's not based on what I saw on the field this past year. It's based on the scouting that was done of him by players and former players who watched him. And it's James Pierce. Okay. And everybody knew apparently not me, but everybody that would had studied practice knew James Pierce was going to be as good as he turned out to be. And so because of that, I put him at number three. Number three, given the fact that he has uh, played, um, I think he's actually number two to uh, Nico. And I think it's because he can be an immediate factor, and they see that in him. Trevor Ask is heard going to play tackle. My indication from talking to somebody actually last week was, yes, he would play left tackle, and then you would move John Campbell to right tackle who sent out uh, on social media that he was lined up in the right tackle stance. Now, I was also told that people read too much into that. So I don't think it's 100%. I don't think that Josh Heupel already has his starting lineup for Chattanooga filled out, Caleb. I mean, you don't have to do that now. So why would you? Hunter says James Pierce should be number two. Listen, I think James Pierce is a special player, but you have to factor in the off-field issue as well, Okay, which he was defiant of police. Not a huge deal. But that's a factor. Hit like and subscribe now before we get to second down. Brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Cooper Mays here. Second down. Okay, second down. Bring in the excitement, Coop. Thanks. Uh, does Hurd have to start right away, a la John Campbell, the way he started uh, last year right away to be successful, to be considered a good get? Could he have a Dante Thornton? type of year where he sort of eases into it and gets better and maybe it was a little too fast too good if he's that can he still be successful Hell at, tennessee, no. by the, at, by, at tennessee by the way not transferring to like illinois or something go ahead hell no and i say okay. hell no because this is a i'm all in for 2024 move by josh heupel and tennessee needs another tackle because they don't have another tackle right now. If Lance Hurd doesn't work out at this year to protect Nico at left tackle where he wants to play, then hell no, he's not a success. Because that doesn't matter what he does after that, Tennessee's going to struggle. Because Tennessee needs, I'm telling you guys this, Tennessee needs 2024 to be a rousing success. If it's not, the program's going to falter under Josh Heupel. So, Hurd himself won't be a disappointment. The whole program becomes a disappointment if Hurd is not successful because if Hurd's not successful, the program's not successful this year. Me Drinker says Hurd is a five-star. He better be starting. I'm, I'm, I'm going to disagree, guys. I think this is in some ways better in the fact that he's a foundational piece than an instant fix in 2024. Do I think he'll be an instant fix in 2024? Yes. I think he starts at left tackle just like John Campbell did, and I think he's better than John Campbell uh, based off all the tape that I've watched at the same point in their career. So I think he will, but he has three years to play too. Um, so I look at Dante Thornton. If Dante Thornton catches, I don't, I don't know, 60 balls next year for 800 yards, is he a success in a transfer? Yes. I get your point. Immediacy is a big thing. And you think, Josh Heupel's loaded up for 2024. I'm thinking of this big picture a little bit, a little bit more long-term. So I think Hurd could be a success and not have an impact in 24. But it certainly would stink if he wasn't an impact in 2024, right? It would be horrible. You know who you are, Dave? <laughs> you know, you know, guys, y'all want to know who Dave is? And Dave, Dave will love this because he is a Celtics fan. In uh, 2007, before Kevin Garnett got traded to the Celtics, they were looking to trade him to Phoenix, but Minnesota wanted Amari Stoudemire, and Phoenix did not want to give up Amari Stoudemire for KG because Stoudemire was younger. Well, Kevin Garnett turned out to be better in the short term and the long term than Amari Stoudemire. 
So giant mistake by Phoenix. You take the now over the long term 100% of the time, particularly when you have a special player like Nico. Okay. Okay. Trevor says, I agree. Caleb, Tennessee needs to have a successful year in 2024. I still think Jalen Hurts. program's going to come undone if they don't. Ooh, okay. Big time disagree, but that's a topic for another day. I think this is a foundational player. I think you take a Lance Hurd instead of like a, a four-year starter out of a, uh, another school that you just get for one year. I think this is a little bit of a hybrid high school player because he has so much eligibility left, which to me is very enticing. You get a chance to mold him. Darnell Wright wasn't anything special until Josh Heupel got on campus and Glenn Ellerby got on campus, right? Yes, but Lance Hurd's greatness will be useless if Tennessee's not good in 2024 because they won't get any talent for 2025. Okay. There. Uh, Hunter says, Caleb's right. 2024 has to be a big year for Tennessee fans to be all in on Josh Heupel. All right, I'll play the minority because I think Josh Heupel is going to be the head coach of Tennessee for the next 10 years. I think he's going to be good enough to keep that job, and I think he's going to have success. And I, I, I don't think you feel the – both you, Caleb, and some of our listeners, I don't think you feel the depth of which – Tennessee has something special in Josh Heupel. Did you notice that all this NFL talk went around and Josh Heupel's name wasn't mentioned? Um, he could have gotten it mentioned. He has uh, an agent. He could have floated it out there, maybe gotten a little more money. He didn't. I think he's a long-term piece. You're kind of greenish, Caleb. Is your light messed up? All right. It's, third, a, it's a lighting <laughs> issue. <laughs> I, my apologies. Caleb turns into the Hulk live each and every weekday at 10 a.m. Third down, Coop. Tennessee center, Cooper Mays here. Third down. All right. So third down is this brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Let me ask you this question. What else does this class need? You can talk immediately or you can talk long term. Uh, what else does this class need? Caleb Calhoun, you say? They need another offensive lineman and another uh, two more secondary players. Like. That, that's pretty clear. Uh, they still don't have a guard. They still don't have a left guard who can play. So and that's that's the big one. And then two more secondary players because they still had a bad secondary last year, and I don't care about any changes they made this offseason. They still need more. Yep. Nope. Uh, fair enough. I can uh, I can definitely roll with all of that. Dynasty pools and spas before we get to fourth down. Any other concerns that you might have with uh, Lance Heard or any concerns, you had brought this up. He did transfer in high school. It's brought to you by Dynasty Pools and Spas. Imagine having the best spas made right here in the United States of America in your backyard. Dynasty Pools and Spas has their showroom open in Athens with the best hot tubs and spas on the market delivery. Yes, they can do that. Complete support spa cover and chemicals are included to get your spa bubbling at its best. They have amazing discounts for first responders, military, and even some blemish models that'll save you a ton. DynastyPoolsAndSpas.com. All right, hit like and subscribe now if you haven't to this point. We're going to try to set a record today for most concurrent viewers. So take that second and hit the like button. Give me a comment. Give me some feedback. And let's see how many people we can get on board for that George McIntyre commitment. All right, what down, Coop? All SEC center Cooper Mays here. Fourth down. Okay, you're the only one that have, has voiced this. And I don't mean that to single you out. I just mean that in terms of... Caleb's ahead of the curve sometimes. And you had said that there might be a, a concern. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but let me, so let me state it like this. A guy very quiet on social media, which is not the norm. And a guy that transferred in high school and, and he's leaving LSU too, which is not a bad school. And they have great facilities too. Any concern that he's making the move from one school to another and also transferred in high school. Any concern that things might not work out from a Louisiana guy that moves to Tennessee? Yeah, I think there's a little bit of diva in him. He's demanding he plays left tackle. And it, that, that part's very clear. Now, it's not as much of a concern as the Walter Nolan situation was because, let's be honest, one, Tennessee's defensive line is much better than their offensive line. So with the defensive line, we talked about it that last week, Dave, you don't want to mess with team chemistry if you can avoid messing with team chemistry. And But the offensive line, you're shorthanded. And more importantly, left tackle, that's very much an individualistic role, right? You don't really have to jive with the rest of the offensive line as a left tackle. You just got to focus on the guy rushing from the outside at left tackle. So it's not as important as defensive line. So it is a concern that he's a bit of a diva. And I, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. I don't think this is the type of player you'd want to build your program around. But I think the position he's playing, you can live with it. 
Okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm completely fine with all of that. I think there is a concern, but it's not like back in the day, Caleb, when if a guy transferred in high school, I was really concerned. That just happens nowadays. It's, it's not nearly as much of an issue. A lot like junior college players. Listen, you get through junior college, uh, and I think that you are um, – you're, you're pretty much ready to go nowadays. That wasn't the case when I first started covering recruiting. All right, Tennessee picks up a surprise commitment over the weekend. We knew uh, that Hurd was coming. Jackson Moya, what can you tell me about him, Caleb? Because I can give you a little bit of insight from talking to some people over the weekend. But your thoughts on a young man that I don't think got on the plane to uh, McGee Tyson and expected to be a ball. I thought he might be a ball but I don't feel like he expected to be a, be a ball, but he leaves Knoxville and he is a ball. Your take on a really, really big pickup on the defensive line and a guy that can be, I believe, an impact player as well. Yeah, Jackson Boy had four and a half tackles for a loss. He was um, like uh, the number five, like the 541st ranked prospect in the 2022 recruiting class, according to 247 Sports Composite. Um, he has two seasons of eligibility remaining. He's probably more of a depth guy this year who will then take another step forward and I think be a very solid senior interior lineman for Tennessee. This is a future move for Josh Heifel, which is fine. Um, they're not as desperate on the defensive line as they are the offensive line. But I think Jackson Moy is the type of pickup, 6'2", 303, that I think he can provide necessary depth this year so Tennessee can run a deep rotation. And I think he can then be a very elite player in 2025. I think he can be an elite player in uh, 2025, but he also steps in and, listen, you can never have too many defensive tackles, right? You can never have too many offensive linemen. And in Tennessee's case, you can never have uh, too many uh, defensive backs in this class because of the issues that they have had before. When I look at the Stanford uh, commitment, Jackson Moy, I think that at six foot two, three hundred and three pounds, that you're not expecting him to be a tear up the middle, put pressure on the passer guy. You're expecting him to be an anchor. I think that's a lot easier. Not to say he's not going to disrupt, but I think it's a, a, an absolute fantastic fit for Tennessee in adding depth. I don't know that many programs in the nation would turn down Jackson Moya. So Tennessee's defensive front, which is already good, could be blank, Caleb, could be blank. Tennessee's defensive front in 2024 could be blank. So I'm going to go, it is still, it it's, going to be very good. I don't think there's anybody great on the defensive front. Uh, now, when I say that, I don't consider edge rushers defensive front. I don't know if you do. I'm thinking defensive tackles alone. So you could tell me if you're considering James. Oh, no, no, no. Right. I, I can, I, I will consider, I want to consider edge rushers and defensive ends. Right. So that great. to me is all the de defensive front. Then great. Then it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great because the defensive tackles are going to do their job. It, none of the defensive tackles are great. But they're very deep and they're all very solid. So the, the defensive tackles have a high floor. And that high floor is all you need for the edge rushers to do the job you want them to do. And I think the edge rushers are going to be absolutely dominant this year. So I'm going to say great. If I made you choose between elite and stellar, which I think stellar and great, you got I think we're kind of saying the same thing. But elite to me is top three or four in the nation. Stellar is top 15 to 20 in the nation. I'll uh, say top 10 in the nation because we're talking about the SEC. So that calls a lot of other programs out. So if I made you choose between elite, like top five or higher, or stellar top 10, Tennessee's defensive front. I got to go stellar because I, I, I can't sit there and say that Georgia probably doesn't have the same level of elite edge rushers, but they also have elite defensive tackles. Okay, to me, like, elite is, like, elite is John Henderson and Albert Hainsworth lining up at defensive tackle together for a year in college. Okay, that's elite. I can't say Tennessee has that this year. Okay, but uh, with this offense, let me play devil's advocate for a second. With this offense, and a lot of people just jumped on board, so hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, uh, we appreciate that. Good morning to all the people that have jumped on board. Let's Let's wait a second here now. 
I, listen, Hainsworth and Henderson were something special, but Tennessee's defensive line is going to be deeper now than that group. And with Josh Heupel's offense, they're going to ask more people to play. So not just for the sake of playing devil's advocate, but I am playing devil's advocate. I think you could argue a deeper group up front might be better than a Henderson Hainsworth combination. Crazy? No, no, I'm not going there. Look, I okay. That, that team didn't allow a rushing touchdown all year until the SEC title game when th they couldn't figure out how to stop the quarterback draw. But up to that point, they didn't allow a rushing touchdown the entire season. I mean, okay. that's an insane stat. But fair enough. All right, I got you on that. All right, hit that like and subscribe button as uh, Tennessee does pick up Jackson Moya. So uh, you, you did you say earlier you don't expect him to be a huge impact player this year? Is I think I expect him to be a solid, reliable player, do exactly what he did at Stanford. But I don't see, like, I, I see him doing slightly less than Amari Thomas and maybe Omar Norman Lott. Like, those are the two guys that are taking over the middle. Amari Thomas and Omar Norman Lott. It's their line. And then I think behind them, Jackson Moy is one of those that will be in the rotation, which is good for them. I think he'll definitely make an impact. But I don't see, I see, I see rotational player this year who plays significant snaps. Don't get me wrong, but I don't see all SEC. I see possibly all SEC potential in 2025. Okay, like I see what team, you're saying. But, you know what I mean? But a rotational player is not bad, right? No, no. This is very good for tackle. This helps at tackle. Yeah. At tackle. Look, the defensive tackle, I, I, the way they're built, and let's just point this out, they're built for the edge rushers to go off by after they get a big lead. The defensive tackles, that's why I said the key for the defensive tackles in the system is for the floor to be high. You don't have to have a Henderson and Hainsworth ceiling. You know what I mean? But you just have to have a high floor where they're not that bad because you need – them to take enough attention for the edge rushers to do what they do and that uh part of the floor what you talked about uh with the depth the depth is part of the floor they've got enough enough depth now where a guy like jackson moy keeps that floor pretty high to where you have to account for the defensive tackles which is going to allow the edge rushers to do what you want the edge rushers to do fair um in this day and age of football i could make an argument I'd rather have five really good def or four or five really good defensive tackles than two elite ones. I could make the argument, but I'm not going to argue Hainsworth and Henderson. Like if you gave me another couple of options in Tennessee's history, I could argue it. But Henderson and Hainsworth were generational players together. So that's I mean, the I greatest interior defensive line in college football history. Yeah, you, if you I had know. them together in the NFL, that would be an amazing interior line. Yeah, I think we're supposed to debate and have hot takes, but I'm not going to take you down that road. I'm going to give you the information. I and not I to think, throw somebody under the bus, but what does it say about Tennessee's defensive coaching that they couldn't that they had trouble with the quarterback draw with those two guys? Uh, they had to have talent to succeed, and they didn't. They weren't great X's and O's guys uh, to uh, lead it, led by John Chavis. I mean, that's just a fact. All right, so our live coverage of George McIntyre's announcement begins now and that's brought to you by don self customer service still matters state farm agent don self and his team take customer service seriously for well over 40 years they built their business and reputation on taking care of their customers college dale noodle wall as well as the greater chattanooga area don self.net don self.net chattanooga state farm agent what happens when you send that claim in if you send that claim in and you've saved a couple bucks and you don't get your money back that's no good don self.net all right george mcintyre Let's talk about George McIntyre for a moment here. I've watched tape of him extensively. Is it safe to say, Caleb, that I know more about football than the average beat reporter out there? Absolutely, you know more about football than the average beat reporter out there. Okay. I'm not just saying this because um, he played yesterday um, uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. But they have a quarterback, and this is who George McIntyre reminds me of. His mobility, his, he is not a dual-threat quarterback, but he can run. And in all fairness, uh, Nico Iamaleava is not a dual-threat quarterback uh, really in my mind now. Everybody can run some. I think he can run some. Now, 20 years ago, you would have called him one of the best runners in college football, right? When you got big stiffs going out there and taking snaps like Tim Couch. But 
he is not a guy like Lamar Jackson that scares me with his legs. Neither is McIntyre. But McIntyre has a, the the pocket presence of a Patrick Mahomes. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to make that comparison, and people are going to go ahead and they can call me crazy if they want. I spent a lot of time uh, looking at him over the weekend and this morning. So I, I wanted to give you my honest assessment, and it's not because Mahomes is fresh on my mind. It's because I think that he has a natural – instinct in the pocket to make people miss and be incredibly calm and that to me is i want to i want to pick one thing that maybe stood out over nico that would be the only thing that i could reach for i don't think his arms is strong um i think his release is really good and comparable but uh patrick mahomes that's my comp what the what was he thinking? Release the hounds. The Dave Hooker Show. K -k -k keep cool. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. Is this the first time we've done What the H for one of the hosts? What the H is Caleb thinking? What the H? No, you do What the H for me all the time. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what the H is Dave thinking? Patrick Mahomes comp. Have I started smoking crack? Yay or nay? You have not started smoking crack yet. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, so so, tell me, what do you think? Of, oh, oh so you're asking me. You want me? Yes. Okay. Not just if I was smoking crack. I'm not smoking crack, obviously. Um, okay. I Okay. So to break this down, I, uh, uh, it's funny because uh, one of the comparisons I made with George McIntyre is actually, believe it or not, uh, Trevor Lawrence. And, and the way I said it, like, if Nico is Tennessee's Deshaun Watson, not character, not even style of play, but, I mean, the guy that takes Tennessee to the next level, McIntyre is the Trevor Lawrence, the guy to continue it. But then I looked at it, McIntyre's style of play is very similar to Trevor Lawrence, who, by the way, does play very similar to Patrick Mahomes in that way. And mm -hmm. so I, I see more Trevor Lawrence only because I can't sit there and – like, look, if you do a Patrick Mahomes comparison, you're borderline doing a Michael Jordan comparison when you're talking NBA players. I mean, we're in real – we're I I think this is the first time we're in real time watching the quarterback that's year in and year out the best quarterback in the NFL also winning the Super Bowl consistently. Like, even when Tom Brady was winning the Super Bowl, Peyton Manning was the best quarterback in the regular season most of those years. It, but this is the first time we're watching the best quarterback in the regular season also be the one to usually win the Super Bowl, which Patrick Mahomes has been doing. And so I can't go with that level. But Trevor Lawrence, I think, is a good one. And I think Trevor Lawrence was the greatest freshman season ever performed by a college quarterback. I think you and I both agree with that, the greatest true freshman college quarterback ever in 2019, 2018. And so McIntyre, I'm seeing as Trevor Lawrence, if Nico does what Nico's supposed to do, McIntyre would not start if he were a true freshman at Tennessee, but he might start as a true sophomore or a redshirt freshman. So we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, but I, I don't think you're, cra I don't think you're crazy because the style of play with Mahomes and Trevor Lawrence is actually similar. And you can even throw Josh Allen in there. The only reason I won't throw Josh Allen is, I don't know if you guys watched the game last night for every spectacular throw Josh Allen makes, how many easy misses does he have, Dave? There, it seems like he has an easy miss every, every other throw. No, um, I, could, I could see that. We did have a, an exclusive interview with Patrick Mahomes that we want to go ahead and bring in and uh, get his thoughts on being compared to a high school quarterback. He, well, I'll just hope he does the best he can. And, um, you know, he's doing a great job and we're rooting for him. That's my Patrick Mahomes impression. My wife laughed in post-game interviews with Patrick Mahomes. Did you like that? Is it okay to make fun of somebody's voice? Is that mean? It's okay. Well, did you know that Patrick Mahomes' wife shared a suite with Taylor Swift? And that's what makes Patrick Mahomes famous now. That's why he's famous, because his wife shares a suite with Taylor Swift at games. Shares a suite? What do you mean? What do they travel? When Taylor when Taylor Swift when they go to the games, because Taylor Swift is a big Chiefs fan now because she's dating Travis Kelsey. Oh so, okay. So that the, the Kelsey stuff uh and the Swift stuff so happened. Taylor Swift, because because Patrick Mahomes' wife is at the game with Taylor Swift. That makes Patrick Mahomes' wife famous, which in turn makes Patrick Mahomes famous. Nobody would know who he was otherwise. Okay, what is this, uh, what does <laughs> a McIntyre commitment mean for Zach Merklinger? Um, Jake Merklinger. Uh, excuse me, Jake Merklinger. Someone's confusing Zach Mettenberger with. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, it, 
I never thought Mark Langer was going to stick. I don't want I, and I've hesitated to say that publicly because I don't want to throw a young man under the bus, but I don't think there's any chance that Nico's a bust. And I think that McIntyre's a better prospect than Mark Langer. I'm sure they don't tell him this, but I think that Mark Langer is kind of a space holder. Oh, I'm absolutely with you on that. I'm with you on that. Uh, Merklinger, and I think Merklinger knew that, but wanted to give himself a shot. And in the area of the, this is why the transfer portal can be good. In the era of the transfer portal, it can be a win-win. Merklinger gives him a shot in Hypel's system, and Hypel at least makes sure that he has a plan B if his plan A doesn't work at the same time. So otherwise, Merklinger would never commit to Tennessee. If he knew that Tennessee was targeting George McIntyre, and Nico Imaliava was already there, there's a 0% chance Merklinger is going to Tennessee, right? But he's going to Tennessee right now because he's giving himself a shot in Josh Heupel's offense. And I think that's where, I think that's kind of the thing that helps out the most. And so, yeah, I think that Merklinger, um, I think, but again, at least you have open competition now, assuming that George McIntyre commits. But if George McIntyre doesn't commit, you have your plan B. He's going to commit. By the way, I'm I'm pulling up the uh, live of George McIntyre committing right now. You let me know if you want to uh, see it. But um, yeah, you want to go ahead and bring it up? Or do we want to share it right now? We yeah, can we'll certainly... go ahead and bring this up. Okay, let's um, uh, go to let's go to the press conference now. Here is George McIntyre to make his decision. We thank you for all the blessings. Well, you we can talk for a minute because they're just praying right now. <laughs> okay. Well, I was just I didn't know what else to do. I was going to put my head down and pray with them because one time I talked during. The... <laughs> I mean, one time I talked during the national anthem and I got more hate mail from that. And it was a mistake by me. I was like 26 years old. So hit the like and subscribe button if you're you're, you're high on McIntyre. All right. They're done praying. Let's go to the press conference now. All right. Let me pull up the sound for it. And it is definitely synonymous with the McIntyres. There are very few families that you can say react with VA as much as you can with the McIntyres. Um, we have... Four graduates, or soon to be graduates, on this stage with us now. Uh, we've got aunts and uncles. It just runs together. In fact, our head football coach, this first person to hire him, was George's grandfather. So the names go together. But instead of me talking about how these school, uh, this school and George go together, I thought my previous job I was admission director. So I went and pulled up George's application to Grandwood Academy. Now, found it's better if I use his words. We'll talk through this because they're just talking about George McIntyre's um, backstory right now, and we don't need to. We 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 know his backstory, right, Dave, and everything he's been doing. Yeah, and, all, I mean, if, if you want to tell us about a little bit about his backstory, and um, we're uh, able to offer up the comp that we did earlier that he thinks uh, Caleb says Trevor Lawrence, and and I say Patrick Mahomes. So we just want to. I uh, keep an eye on when he actually commits, but he's he's going to be a fall. I can go ahead and uh, tell you that. Um, I, I don't think there's any question now. That my uh, one question is: Are you just pretty much done with Jared Curtis, who is uh, he's the 2026 class, and um, he is expected to go to Georgia? Do you give up on on him? Uh, six foot four, already 225 pounds. No, no, you don't. You absolutely don't. Um, because you don't know what could happen at Georgia. We all saw that with Nick Saban um, at Alabama. We didn't know he was going to up and up and cruise. So let's go back to this uh, announcement now and see where and, they are. And for those who don't know, McIntyre's grandfather coached at Vanderbilt from 1979 to 1985. Um, and a quick connection. I don't know that's, real a, know that's a bonus, but anyway. A quick connection real quick. Philip Fulmer was an assistant at Vanderbilt under George McIntyre his first year at Vandy in 1979. Fulmer did coach at Vandy a year before going to Tennessee. You only so. get this information right here at Off the Hook Sports. Uh, I see you, Brian. Hello. Hit like and subscribe. Uh, who are some of the best players UT has gotten from Brentwood Academy? Boy, that's a, a question. I know the Brentwood Academy hammered Powell um, in the state finals in 1991. I can tell you that that because I was there. Um, but all right, let's go back to this press conference, see where they are. All right, we'll see where they are right here. Pulling this up. Um, looks like Mike and Tyra is getting the mic now. First off, I'd like to say thank you for all being here. Uh, it means a lot to be able to do this in front of the family, people I grew up with, teammates, 
classmates, and coaches. We all have passions. Uh, mine just happens to be playing football, and I'm so excited to be even playing college football. Thank you to the Berwyn Academy community for the support all these past six years. I'd like to thank all the coaches and programs who took the time to recruit me. To be able to visit the big name schools was a dream come true in itself. Specifically, I'd like to thank my parents, mom, and dad. I know I keep y'all busy between football, basketball, and travel, but y'all's love and continued support means the world to me. To my sisters, thank you for enduring being a quarterback sibling. I know it isn't easy to understand sometimes. To Grant St. Gramps, who never miss a game, thank you. And to Coach Miss Betty, who I know is finally down from heaven, I strive to make y'all proud every day. To my coaches, my trainer Thomas, and teammates, Thank you for helping me and to make me into the player and person I am today. Lastly, I'd like to thank Jesus Christ. Without him, nothing is possible. God is good, and I hope that each and every one of you will find him eventually. And as for my commitment, I love this state, the fan base, and the coaches, and I'll be staying home at the University of Tennessee. Well, there we go. There is. Your commitment to the university. Go balls. Go balls. Yep. All right. So let's drop out of this. I'm going to tell you a couple of things I like. And how many of these press conferences do you think I've covered, Caleb? Probably life? more than you care to. And, and more than you care to. And let me guess. They always say the exact same thing, right? No. Um, actually, hundreds. But the, the, the thing I like about it, he didn't play the hat game. Did anybody notice that? Did anybody notice he didn't yeah, play he didn't the three hats it. out there? It was just very businesslike. Um, listen, you you may or may not be religious, um, but I think that having some sort of faith and some sort of foundation is strong. I happen to be Christian. You 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 may not. That that's up to you. But I do think that that was uh, in, incredibly strong. Uh, and and I commend him for that. He thanked Jesus uh, right before making his announcement and. Um, I'm impressed by the press conference. He didn't play the game of having three hats out there or even back in the day uh, with his puppy and all that stuff. So we, we've seen other prospects do that. Uh, I, I, I get a good vibe off that presser, and I think I'm better than most at getting a vibe off of pressers, Caleb, because that school yeah. wanted to stop everything. And we all know the weather hasn't been great. And th this may have been planned for two or three days, but that school was ready to stop everything for a press conference for that young man. Why? Because they are incredibly proud of him. And if he makes that sort of announcement one day, whether or not he's going to return to Tennessee for his senior year or go pro early, Tennessee is going to be incredibly proud of him. Um, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, very impressed on a press conference scale. It was nice and tight too. He didn't stretch it out. Um, Press conference scale, that was an 11. Yeah, no, he was just ready to go. He's like, I'm ready to announce. Uh, most of the time, high schools make the show out of this more than the student, which is funny that Brentwood did because for those who don't know, yeah, Brentwood has been a pretty – this is nothing new to Brentwood Academy with five-star, four-star commitments. Um, those asking earlier, their best player, that's an easy one. It's Derek Barnett and Scott Wells are the two best players to ever come out of Brentwood Academy up until this point. And this – if Tennessee is obviously hoping he'll be the next one, but Josh Heupel has his quarterback going forward. And for those who come at me about Nashville recruits, Brentwood's not in Nashville. Okay. In case oh, y'all didn't know. That's Nashville enough. I, I, I mean, let's, well, I don't want to belabor this, but uh, th there have been a lot of bust out of Nashville. Um, but you and not I not out of Brentwood though. Not okay. So, so tell me about Brentwood specifically. That still is considered Nashville to me. But yes, anyway. but okay. I, I go Brent. Typically, Brentwood, given its resources and funds, lures the best talent from Nashville to Brentwood. So we're the elite players that are. I talk about the ratio of Nashville being low, and it is. That ratio is not going to be that low at Brentwood, though, when they're actually they can handpick the most elite talent in the area and bring them out there, which they do consistently. And so Brentwood is it, it's a you know this, Dave, the private schools that throw the off that throw the money at players. That, that, that's not going to be the same low ratio as the public schools, just in the sense that they can pick and choose who they want. So they're going to have a good ratio no matter what, aren't they? And 
and, and Brentwood is one of those one of those schools. No, they actually the the way they I mean, a little history lesson that you'll appreciate the way they hammered Powell in 1991 is part of the reason that there are actually two levels of football in Tennessee, Division One and Division Two. Division Two is allowed to offer scholarships. Division One is not. And that was in part because they hammered my high school while I was freezing in the cold in the stands watching. So th- there we go. Um, let's not fight on the message board. You should absolutely be celebrating what Tennessee is doing right now because I- I'm, I'm telling you, I-, I mentioned the Boya thing. That's more of a foundational piece. Uh, I- I'm sorry, Heard is is more of a foundational piece than a one-year fix. McIntyre is a long-term guy. Josh Heupel is answering the questions about recruiting that you had when he was hired. He managed to Band-Aid them with NIL. That's what they did, Caleb. They band-aided it with NIL. And now you're to the point they're winning it, and I've told you this, and I've told you this, and I've told you this. It it is absolutely a special culture at Tennessee, and it will bring in players by itself. There might be a player that commits to Tennessee one day that doesn't even meet Josh Heupel, and I'm barely joking about that. He could show up on campus, Sure, there were some defensive players to John Chavis back in the day that didn't really care who the head coach was. They loved John Chavis. This, I'm, I'm telling you, this program is building into that where it recruits itself. Hit like and subscribe if you want the insight that we've been telling you for all this time. Do you think we would continue the ball report with Jacob Warren and Cooper Mays if I had trouble dealing with them on a weekly basis? No, they're always like right there, ready to go. Do they tell me stuff sometimes about what's going on around the program that I'm not going to share? Yes, but it's always positive. I'm here telling you it's always positive. And that to me says something because I feel like those guys trust me and they would tell me if that wasn't the case. I told you that Nico was so was going to be so special. Have I been wrong on that? Hit the like and subscribe button and turn the notifications on. And you can also spell. So it's a place to be, Caleb. Um, But uh, Tennessee, this to me is a huge impact. And I think I'm going to write a column comparing the Jordan Hurd commitment to this. You mean the Lance Hurd commitment? Lance Hurd commitment. Why do I call him Jordan? Lance Hurd commitment uh, to George McIntyre. Because I think this almost makes a bigger statement of long-term recruiting. Yeah, this is a, you're right. This makes a huge statement. And for those asking why Nico didn't have that long-term effect, Nico committed when Tennessee was coming off a seven and six year. And Dave, you can attest to this. They were still under NCAA investigation when Nico committed. And in all fairness, it's not a prospect's responsibility to recruit for the school. He was also playing volleyball. And which was very important to him. He was he could have gone and got played volleyball anywhere in the nation. Go ahead. Right. No, that's true. But what George does, which by the way, that explains why he's so fluid as a runner. <laughs> you know, he's very light on his feet, Nico. Um, what George mm-hmm. can do though, and this is a big one, you don't think the whole state of high school football players knows about George McIntyre? You don't think everybody from from Johnson City to Memphis is familiar with him to a certain degree because of them at the high school level? And you don't think all those elite recruits are kind of a little wide-eyed now and saying, oh, I'd love to go play with him in Knoxville. You don't think this is going to help Tennessee build close and borders around the state a little more? Because I think it will. Well, let's talk about that because the discussion is coming up. Um, The the discussion is coming up on our message board where his rankings are. Uh, Trevor is nice enough to say something. I really appreciate this. Dave and Caleb are the best covering UT right now, and I'll listen to everyone get honest takes uh, where other platforms only uh, take other party lines and are pure homers. So thank you. That's very nice of you to say. And we're one of the crew, but we take pride in what we do. All right, let's get to the rankings because there's a a discussion on the rankings that maybe 247 uh, dropped McIntyre because... That's wrong. Composite okay. still has him as a five-star. Okay, okay. So he's... 247 individually has him at four. Okay, so let's get the rankings across the board. And I know that, you know, for working from ESPN, that they might not have theirs up yet because they only have a couple of analysts, whereas these other places have hundreds. So what rankings can you give me across the board? So it's weird. On the individual services across the board, 
He is a four-star on ESPN, a four-star on Rivals, and a four-star on 247 Sports. Funny enough, I know that's kind of wild to say, and a four-star on On3. However, the composite altogether actually ends up leading to him being a five-star for 247 Sports composite, which does throw me off a little bit how that happened. But I guess they have different methodology when they add everything together. I have come across those as well with the composite where it doesn't seem to add up. So you're okay for being a little confused because it's probably happened a dozen times over my career since 247 came into being. Yeah. And for those wondering, guys, they're not going to – 247 specifically has one of the strongest Tennessee presences. They're not going to drop a rating because he committed to Tennessee. That's not going to happen at 247. If it, 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 it's the reverse for Tennessee. If you guys really think 247 has an agenda against Tennessee, you're delusional. That's one of the top Tennessee sites possible. It is. And, and the, the same could be said for uh, you know our, our friends, uh, uh, Brent Hubs and the guys at On3 now who were with Rivals. Um, I think that they, they're, they're never going to drop. As a matter of fact, I don't know that these guys individually, and I know the Ryan Callahan's of the world at 247, they wouldn't do this individually, I don't believe. But could a guy up in a higher tier say, let's give him another star because he went to one of our top sites? Certainly. I think that was called the Alabama bump back in the day. And I think guys went from four and five stars because Alabama was so huge. So could that happen? Absolutely. There is no question that that could happen I believe with either one of those sites, but neither one of those sites are going to take away a star, Caleb, because that's a bread and butter. No, no, they're not going to take away a star whatsoever. So uh, they, they will not hurt Tennessee. You may not think that you may think they're a little bit more accurate and helping them, but they're not going to hurt them. No, that, that, that four star, I don't know where the four star comes from. I don't know why it's not a five star, um, but he's borderline five star with the exception of ESPN, which as you pointed out, you throw out the window. I mean, the guy's got a 95 rating on on three, a 94 rating on two, four, seven. And between the two of them, then you, you got to think that that's so close to five star at that point. And he's six, five and a half. The only thing I can maybe say is that a little bit thin right now, and maybe they're a little worried about his ability to run, but, um, but yeah, I, I think what that, did, but what, I mean, I've got a six foot, son he weighs 140 pounds 145 150 pounds he's gotten up to 165 i believe before i mean other than me i was a fat kid other than me what what 17 year old that's athletic which my son is doesn't struggle to keep on weight and by the way mcintyre plays basketball so he could be one of those guys much like nico that puts on weight easily when you have a spring sport like volleyball or basketball uh, in Nico and McIntyre, respectively, that's really, really difficult to put on weight. And I believe, though, as a whole, it makes you better, a uh, better competitor all around. Now, the question is, will McIntyre coming into his senior year be a midterm enrollee? My guess is yes. Um, and it, I would think that basketball might take a back seat. But if it doesn't and he just wants to be an all around competitor, I'm not mad about that. Trust me. I do not believe in specializing sports from the get. I do not think that is a wise way to go. So who's not light at 17 years old coming into the SEC? Who's not light? Well, what quarterback do we see that's 240 pounds? And no, that's a good point. And George McIntyre likely wouldn't start his at the very least his first year at Tennessee anyway. And another point that you want to that we want to bring up that we want to mention is that. You bring up he plays basketball. Guys, I've covered enough recruiting to know this, and Dave, you know this well as well. And this actually is a bigger problem in the South than it is out on the West Coast when they do judgments. I don't know why it is, but it is. If you don't go to the camps in the South, which a lot of times if you play in other sports, you can't go to the camps, recruiting services hold that against you. For those who don't remember, Trey Flowers was a three-star. and Most experts said he would have been a high four-star had he not played baseball and skipped all the camps all four years he was in high school, which is stupid. But that recruiting services put a lot. I mean, you know this, Dave. They endorse those camps. This is a big thing for them, right? Hosting those camps and things like that. And and if you're playing another sport, you can't go to the camps. And I think that's actually a huge reason that you saying he played basketball. That's probably a big reason that he's that he's not a full on five star. 
Yep, I agree. Mark says, uh, sup, Dave and Caleb from Daily Listener. We appreciate that. Displace ball in Charlotte, North Carolina. Go balls. We appreciate you being on board. Hit that like and subscribe button. So I just posted on the message board. You guys know I really like Nico. Now, I think Nico is uh, uh, a, a special generational player. But I really like McIntyre, too. I mean, I spent like an hour watching watching some film this morning. I I really, really like McIntyre. My question for you, I'm scared to go down this path because I don't want people to get too mad at me. That's never stopped me before, so here we go. If for whatever reason, Nico doesn't pan out, if Nico decided that he was going to transfer tomorrow, which he's not going to do, but with Merklinger and McIntyre, wouldn't you still feel really, really good about Tennessee's quarterback situation? You'd have a yes. highly rated, you'd have a highly rated guy coming in and another guy waiting behind him. That to me is almost as as big of a get as as getting Nico to sign the dotted line. Yeah, no, that's huge. It's a huge deal. Um, I think that. I think this was what Heifel always wanted was no matter what season he's going into, he has two legitimate options at quarterback. And that's what he has now going into 2020. I don't, here's, I will say this though, Dave, he's never going to have three options at quarterback because I'll tell you what's going to happen. Fall December of this year, George McIntyre is likely to be an early enrollee, right? Yes. Yes. So December of this year, George McIntyre will show up. Berkling Guru is going to similar to Taven Jackson last year. Berglinger is going to know pretty quickly if he's going to beat out George McIntyre for the job or yeah. not. And then, and then, the and then McIntyre and Merklinger goes, and that's just the way that college football is nowadays. You're yeah. not going to, you're not going to be three deep at quarterback. <clears throat> you're not going to have, what was it? Uh, Schaefer, Ainge, Clausen, three. Well, you had I, Rick Clausen. You didn't have okay. Schaefer. You had Sch <laughs> like, no one was. I know, I know, no, no, no. Not to confuse everybody. Schaefer, Ainge, Rick Clausen. But those are three starting quarterbacks in the SEC. The last one is a little iffy. The I last mean, one was not a starting quarterback caliber, okay, starting caliber quarterback in the but SEC. He did, but he did. I know that's a little sketchy. Tennessee Cider Company ain't sketchy. The original hard cider of the Smoky Mountains used the promo code HAT. That's HAT to receive some free swag with your cider order. Available almost anywhere in the United States of America. That's the exciting part. Now, at some point, if Josh Heupel does what I think he'll do, and that is be the coach at uh, Tennessee for the next decade, or at least have a 10-year run at Tennessee, and this would be year four, right? So I, I at least, I think there might be a period where he has to get a fill-in quarterback because of the transfer portal and taking people away. But if you if you're Josh Heupel and at any point you have to pick up a quarterback in the transfer portal, how easy is that going to be nowadays? If you built something with a strong offensive line and a consistent defense, which I believe they're going to get to, it gets a it gets a lot easier. Travis says Schaefer, Ainge, Rick Clausen aren't three legit starters. By the way, fair yeah, enough. You got lit up for that one, Dave. But at, okay, but at the time getting into it. You thought they had three competent starters, okay? And this is where we are now. One of these guys may prove not to be a competent starter. That was my point, is going into that season, I thought they had three guys that could probably get, get by or be. You really thought Rick Clawson was competent for the SEC? Nick Saban was one who even told him, like, you're not cut out for the SEC. And, yeah, that was a – I feel like they picked Rick Clawson because they wanted to get Jimmy, quite honestly. I feel like that's Oh, no, no, no. Him. Completely agree with that, yeah. Yeah, completely yeah. agree with that. Um, no question okay. about that. So uh, Tennessee so, picks up another commitment. Um, this is a just a monster pickup. Let's kind of recap, Caleb, if you can. Tennessee picks up Lance Hurd and Jackson Moy. So you're talking about what in a 24-hour period? How how much has Tennessee's football team changed? Well, None of this outside of Jackson Moy was unexpected. So I can't say it's changed much, but I think that, but it, okay, morale has changed. What this shows is that you know you have the, J Josh Heupel has the program rolling exactly how you hoped he would have it rolling by 2024. And I think that's a big deal. 
in that regard. So that's where that's where it's changed. Um, I was I will be honest. I was shocked by Lance Hurd until about last week when we started to learn that the commitment was was probably real and happening. Um, I still think Lance Hurd is the biggest of the three on this because of the impact of this year. And Lance Hurd's impact this year makes him the biggest commitment of the three. Because I think they could replace. Not that they could replace, but there's always an elite quarterback somewhere. Um, Man, it's a five-star quarterback, though. When you've already got a five-star quarterback with three years. 2024 year, over 2020. Four, you have this four is years recruiting. of eligibility. We know that Nico's not going to play four years. but This is I covered recruiting too long, Dave Hooker. You forget about the... You, you don't see the forest for the trees, Dave, because you forget about the year in front of you because you're thinking about the year after. No, but this is a recruiting segment, though, isn't it? I know, but you got to think about what's more important, the transfer or the recruit. The transfer, because you already have Nico on the, in, the, in, the, in the system, is more important because you need 2024 to be that year. Okay, fair enough. He's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker. Um, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Have you done that? Um, because you need to. And please turn the notifications on. Thank you for all the kind words. And um, what what SEC head coach uh, retweeted a story of ours uh, over the weekend and also why Tennessee may have a special connection in terms of uh, ethnicity? Um, coming up and Mike Matthews is an absolute star. Give us two minutes and we continue to bring you what you need to know with Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker off the sports. Sun, sand and salt water. The beach is a very relaxing place unless you wear contacts. Ow! Open your eyes to the best the beach has to offer with LASIK vision correction from Campbell Cunningham laser center. Ah. Sports Treasures in North Knoxville is one of the South's largest sports cards and memorabilia dealers, featuring over 10 million sports cards from vintage to modern. Sports Treasures carries a full line of hobby boxes, singles, autographed memorabilia, tennis evolved collectibles, fan cave decorations, and so much more. See a museum full of collectibles at Sports Treasures, 4819 North Broadway in Fountain City, and Sports Treasures on Facebook. Sports Treasures, where the real sports fan goes to shop. Have you seen the latest TriStar Hats Co. product? TriStar Hats Co., what's that? You know, those really cool hats, shirts, tumblers, and even license plates with three stars like the official Tennessee flag and stripes like the American flag. Pretty patriotic if you ask me. Ah, I got you. Seen those. Those are cool. Where can I get them? Simple. TriStarHatsCo.com. And if you order now, there's 10% on any order $50 or more. Plus, use the promo code HOOKED. With the promo code HOOKED, you get 10% off. That's HOOKED. And don't forget free shipping with any order over 50 bucks. Stock up at TriStarHatsCo.com. That's TriStarHatsCo.com. There are plenty of wannabes out there, so make sure you go to TriStarHatsCo.com for the best quality and customer service. Will do, and I'll be sure to use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED when I do to save an additional 10% off. TriStarHatsCo.com. TriStar Hats Co. is a trademark of TriStar Hats Co. LLC. Any use without express written consent is prohibited. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. You're listening to The Dave Hooker Show, a presentation of offthehooksports.com. The internet is full of pictures of each and every one of you. Available on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the Off The Hook Sports app. Download now for free. Is there nothing you people can't do? Also available on offthehooksports.com. You're on our video platform, YouTube, and the audio rejoins playing. You get to watch Caleb frantically bounce around and try to fix his light because he was turning into the Incredible Hulk. Maybe your new nickname is Bill Bixby. (laughs) <laughs> you don't even remember the hulk from the late 70s do you no i remember the marvel ones so you know it's uh that, i mean the, the the mcu ones with uh mark ruffalo and uh oh, who was the one who played him afterward uh, uh norton. norton edward norton yes yes yeah, he was very good but he was completely a 
jack wagon to work with apparently hey i want to take a second to thank all those that are here um because we love doing our live show because we do more interaction sometimes you'll watch a lot of the 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 videos that uh caleb breaks up and i think that is awesome and you know it, it helps us with the, the youtube but I, I will go ahead and tell you that i love the interactions with uh the trevor's derrick's uh, travis's of the world and yes lou ferrigno was the best by the way a bodybuilder at six seven doesn't happen um you're supposed to be shorter to pack on that much muscle but we're live 10 a.m each and every day so we love that no matter what's happening in the world of sports so we love the community as much as anything and can't thank you enough because the numbers have been through the roof so hit uh, like and subscribe please turn the notifications on uh by the way now, Levi says something interesting before we get to the Polynesian Bowl that might as well be called the Volunteer Bowl from now on uh, because Tennessee is dominating it. Levi says 2025 is the year, in my opinion. So Caleb's starting to go Hulk again, but I know you would disagree with that. You would say 2024, right? It's absolutely 2024. There's absolutely no debate. It's 2024. We're not going to have this conversation. If Tennessee is not good – how? Only losers keep talking about the year after this year. How long do you think about the future before you say it's time to win now? Okay. Um, you know, it, at some point, it's time to win now and stop thinking you're rebuilding. And this is the year if you're Tennessee. Like, um, I remember, I'll, I'll give you an example. In 2007, I'm going to say I think it's both. I'm going to disagree with you. I think it's both because I think 2025, they're even deeper. So what if Tennessee. We're the 13th team in a 12-team playoff this season. I don't think it's time to put Josh Heupel in the hot seat. This is a topic for another day, but it absolutely is. It okay. absolutely is. Okay. It absolutely. If, if, if they don't make the playoff this year, I'd fire him. Oh, come on. Nope, I would. I'll say it right now. If Tennessee doesn't make the playoff this year, I'd fire Josh Heupel in a heartbeat. Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, we're going to get to the Polynesian Bowl that may be called the Neyland Bowl. Pretty uh, soon. Uh, the Polynesian Bowl coverage brought to you by. No, I'm not going to do that. But um, I'm, uh, I am going to tell you that. Um, and this Polynesian Bowl seems to be a showcase for for the balls. Uh, <clears throat> did you happen to see what Mike Matthews did uh, over the weekend? Give us an update. Derek says, Caleb, look outside. There might be a UFO above your house. True. Uh, <laughs> but, but people do agree with you that 24 is the year um trevor says preach caleb okay we're doing this for another day probably tomorrow actually but uh caleb um mike matthews man five-star prospect polynesian bowl that's not quite the u.s army all-american bowl and what it was it is not quite the under armor all-american bowl and what it once was that had the top 160 players combined, but it's still elite talent where skill position players can shine and show what they can be at the next level because skill position players, you can run skelly and go out there and you, you, you're not as physical up front and you can build some chemistry in a week. Matthews did that with his quarterback and Matthews was an absolute star over the weekend. Tell us about him in the Polynesian Bowl. Yeah, so Mike Matthews um, had was incredibly athletic, had a catch where he called over the middle, and he beat the corner off the line, called a pass over the middle, and then outran everybody into the end zone for a touchdown, which is a big deal because Mike Matthews was recruited largely for his size. But if he's got that breakaway speed, we're talking a rare talent. Like, Brew McCoy doesn't even have breakaway speed like that, quite honestly. And that's a rare, rare talent at whiteout for Mike Matthews. Um it's a bit, he was reportedly struggling with consistency in the middle of the game, but he still was named offensive MVP. And it's important to point out that his quarterback was Dylan Rayola, who actually was also wildly inconsistent too. So to be fair, when your quarterback is inconsistent as a receiver, a lot of times you're going to then be inconsistent as a, as a receiver, as a receiver. So I believe that Mike Matthews, sorry guys, like fell over. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I believe that Mike Matthews, honestly, um, is Dewey. I think he had he was the story of the Polynesian Bowl. He is the offensive MVP, and this is a look. It's more proof that Tennessee's wide receiver room is absolutely loaded this year. 
Yep. And listen, Georgia fans aren't shaking in their boots, but the ones like the people that are on, on this program right now that are really hardcore fans that keep up with recruiting are well aware that Mike Matthews left Lilburn or Lilburn, Georgia. Um, and they're well aware that Georgia wanted him and he could have gone to Clemson. Southern California was on him. Uh, Alabama was on him. So this is a trending guy. I don't want to uh, overanalyze recruiting as you accused me of earlier, but this is a trending guy kind of like McIntyre that um, proves that Tennessee is heading in the right directions. It's not, a, Oh, you got to have a player now because Pruitt is close in the rear view mirror. He's not close anymore. This, this is a guy that proves the corporate, co- uh, the, the culture, the team culture that, that Tennessee has. And the fact this are we beyond the discussion of can Josh Heupel recruit in the SEC? Is this weekend the official end of the discussion? Not because of Hurd, but because of Moya, McIntyre. Uh, we, we saw what Ma- Mike Matthews did. Are we officially beyond that discussion where, yes, NIL is a tool, but it's not a Band-Aid for the Vols and Josh Heupel, that he is a legit recruiter? I'm willing to to make that statement right this second. I mean, you're talking to a guy who thinks a coach's ability to recruit is massively overrated and that it's way, it's 95% the program infrastructure and 5% the coach's work ethic. And that's it. So that's how I've always believed with recruiting. Okay. But in this case, he puts the infrastructure in and I'm going to disagree with you because Philip Fulmer did a fantastic job recruiting and up Tennessee's recruiting from Johnny major. So I think the coach, it's not all the coach. Nick Saban wasn't the only recruiter for Alabama, but I think it's a good 25% of it. I might You're also you forgetting, okay, Philip Fulmer's golden class was 1997. That happened to come on the heels of the one year that Tennessee had the largest stadium in college football, and they were the only 100,000-seat stadium in the SEC at the time. That was one of the biggest selling points. Also, because they were playing national, they were playing on national TV, non-conference games every year, home and homes with schools like UCLA. That's what did it for Tennessee more than anything. I think Fulmer had the work ethic, and I'm not knocking the work ethic. I've always said recruiting is a it's it's a it's more of a it's about a will, not an ability. Okay, you know people think you have to be a good salesperson. Butch Jones was a salesperson. Look at how that worked out. Okay, Nick Saban is no salesperson. And he still scored on the recruiting trail because of the infrastructure of the program and the credibility he had. Um, as for, but I I will say this, Josh Heibel doesn't have to work that hard to recruit receivers anymore. And I think he recruits receivers with the best of them. And here's what Mike Matthews brings that, this is what he showed in the Polynesian Bowl. And this was big. And by the way, we got to get to Jordan Ross too, who also stood out in the Polynesian Bowl. But Mike Matthews specifically, outrunning everybody for a touchdown like that, the physical big physical receivers, Brew McCoy and Cedric Tillman, is a big part of how Josh Heupel's offense goes. Georgia two years ago figured out how to shut that down because Georgia was like, "We'll play these corner, we'll play these receivers one on one, and they won't beat us down the sideline. And if the, out, if the wideouts don't beat the corners down the sideline, Josh Heupel's offense falls flat on its face. So you need more speed at the wideout spot. That's what Mike Matthews brings. Mike Matthews is the type of player where if he were on the team two years ago, Hendon Hooker probably beats Georgia in Athens, and Strong, yes. strong. Some questions from the message board. I want to get to sports treasures, carrying over 5 million sports treasures and so much more. Follow on Facebook for the best sports memorabilia daily updates. Facebook.com and go to sports treasures TN. Follow them there. Sports treasures TN. Over 5 million sports treasures love their daily updates. So sign up uh, for that. A couple of questions concerning uh, Matthews in particular from the message board that I want to get to. Uh, first, Rob says, as far as Hypel, yes, Dave, he has proved it as a recruiter. I agree. I don't think he has to have NIL anymore. Uh, Jeffrey asked the question is, does Matthews play next year? Funny enough, Jeffrey, I have a column that's pretty much done about this, but I wanted to confirm the midterm enrollees. Um, Matthews doesn't have to play this year to have an impact, and Tennessee likes to run a tight receiver rotation. So you may very well see Mike Matthews not be an impact, a big impact this year, but I don't think that's any cause for concern. Uh, he is he is clearly one of those guys that Tennessee's leaning on. People already forget that Brew McCoy was kind of a Band-Aid guy, right? 
I mean, he was a transfer guy. They took risk on him. Brew McCoy could have showed up on campus and being been a complete jerk given his background. He wasn't. So I don't think Mike Matthews has to play this year, but he certainly could. Uh, Jordan Ross also at the Polynesian Bowl was absolutely fantastic. Uh, tell me about Jordan Ross. Uh, Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler. Support our sponsors. That's why we're here. RickTerryJewelry.com. RickTerryJewelry.com. Looking for affordable game day jewelry. How about the Fire Opals? That's a Tennessee tradition. Rick Terry Jewelry Design. Jordan Ross is another five star. I mean, we're talking about two five stars in the same class. I can't remember the last time that's happened. Uh, I'll have to go back and look. Maybe you can help me off the top of your head. But Let's not forget, because Matthews gets the ball in his hands, get all excited about him, and he was the offensive MVP. Jordan Ross is a guy that could play this year. Yes, so uh, On3 actually said, this is a quote from reported uh, Charles Power of On3, who said that no player flashed more throughout the Polynesian Bowl than Jordan Ross. Um, accordingly, uh, reportedly, he lived in the backfield all evening, stood out throughout the whole week of practice, he seemed unblockable off the edge. Six four and a half, two twenty guy. Guys, what did I say last two weeks ago? That I what question did we talk about? Is Tennessee becoming edge rusher? You, James Pierce, and now Jordan Ross, and now we're seeing why Tyler Barron entered the portal. And because I don't think it was worth them opening the checkbook for Tyler Barron. I'll just say that Jordan Ross is going to be a superstar for Tennessee. And this is a huge get. I, again, Tennessee's, by the way, that didn't even include like Joshua Joseph, some of the guys already on the roster right now, Shane Davian Bradley, David Hobbs. Tennessee's a factory for edge rusher talent more than any other position right now. And Jordan Ross is about to fulfill that void in a huge way. Uh, yes, but he's got to put it, but he may, not be an impact player this year as well because he's at 220 which he came in weighed at the polynesian bowl so he's put on five pounds but he also has to he's probably got to put on 20 more pounds right i mean and, and james pierce probably finds the field more because tennessee needs uh young players to step up so he's got well ross probably right, right? yeah he does ross is probably going to back up james pierce because heifel I think he wants that smaller edge rusher, at least on one of the spots. So yeah, Ross won't play next year. That that I think that's so that's that's well documented. But this is a guy who is part of when we talk about I still say Tennessee should be all in on 2024, but when you talk about the rock and the future of 20 uh, like Jordan Ross is a guy you really really zone in on for that. Yep. Uh guaranteed. I like uh Jordan Ross. I don't think he has to play this upcoming year, but you bring him in in a pass rush situation on a third and 12. Yeah. I think he's an edge rusher that could be that type of guy. We'll see the way he shows up on campus. I don't I don't think he's a starter early on. Uh, Trevor, you asked that question. Now, the next step for Tennessee football recruiting is what? Continue to prove that they can put guys in the league. That's it. And they really have they've laid a foundation of that. Um, you just need a stronger foundation and start to build up on levels. Uh, for those that are new, please uh, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Go ahead and do that for just a second. But that's that's the last piece in the puzzle is proving guys can play in the league. So you're probably hoping that uh, Jared Goff at some point decides to go elsewhere, even though he's having success with the Lions and Hendon Hooker is the starting quarterback. But let's not underestimate the star power that Peyton Manning uh, brought Tennessee when he was starring in the NFL that all these guys, whether we're talking about, I mean, I saw Jalen Reeves Maven with a sack yesterday. I mean, all of these guys having success in the NFL, that helps Tennessee because if, if you're a smart prospect or a smart prospect's family, you're paying attention to where these guys that are starting in the NFL played in college. No, I, I agree. And beyond Peyton Manning, we can go back to, you know, if you want to talk about the history of Tennessee as wide receiver, you, Willie Galt starring in the Super Bowl with the 85 bears was a huge reason that Tennessee became wide receiver U because Anthony Morgan came around for that. Um, then you obviously got Carl Pickens. I mean, how many stars did you have to commit? I, I, I know that they were wide receiver U before that with Stanley Morgan, but actually that's a, 
Think about this, Dave. Stanley Morgan and Willie Galt were the top two receivers in the 85 Super Bowl with the Patriots and the Bears. You don't think that became made Tennessee a pipeline for receivers after that? Great point. Yeah, first, so, uh, that was the first Super Bowl party I ever threw when I was 11 years old, by the way. And uh, we had snacks. Obviously, there was no alcohol. But we had we had snacks, and um, it was the biggest blowout ever, and we made it through the first quarter. I feel like it's the last Super Bowl that a running back was the most important player on the team, too, that won it. Mm -hmm. Other bowl party. You want to hear the uh, Tennessee bowl party that I threw? That was actually sure. a good one. Tennessee, Virginia. Remember that? Oh, yeah, where they came. I don't remember, but I know the story. They were down 22-3 to three and came back and won 23-22. to 22. Derek Dooley was on that Virginia team, guys. Um. Always bring it back to the duels. Um, there you go. All right. So, uh, Deion Sanders has a problem with uh, negative recruiting. <sighs> All right, guys. Um, this to me is in incredibly hypocritical. If you're going to hire your son as a social media manager, if you're going to try to control your image, the one thing you don't do is come out and say that other people are trying to control your image. I'm a Deion Sanders fan. I have enjoyed the content and the storyline. I don't necessarily think he's going to win a national championship anytime soon, but I've enjoyed it. This to me, though, is very fallible. When you're doing so much to control your image and you don't expect other coaches to recruit against you negatively, then you're absolutely foolish. What did Deion Sanders say? Because he's talking about Tennessee. He's talking about SEC teams. He's talking about anybody that could possibly get in get in his way. His exact quote was, yes, he said, uh, speaking on a podcast with RG3, funny enough, who RG3 maybe needs to also keep his mouth shut because he's trying to start a war wars with Jay Gruden and RG3, you're not going to win that fight because you didn't lose your starting job just in Washington. You lost it in Cleveland and you lost it in Baltimore. So, okay. Um, yeah. So he said on RG3's podcast, quote, I don't allow our coaching staff to ever comment on another school. You don't have to put another school down to put us up. I don't play that. And then he said, now kids have recorded conversations with head coaches, not just assistants, head coaches downing us and selling us out and just talking about us like a dog. I just politely call the head coach and say, look here, man, I don't really know you. I wish the best for you, but be careful because when these kids bring phones into your meetings, you are exposed to certain things. I'm not going to put you out there, but just keep my name out your mouth. I've had to have that conversation. That's quote unquote with Dion. Okay. Now here's my thoughts on negative recruiting. And let me give you a little bit of insight from everybody. Remember Trooper Taylor? Who remembers Trooper yep. Taylor? Hit the like button. If you remember Trooper Taylor. Uh, one of t is it fair to call him one of Tennessee's most liked assistant coaches in the history of the program? Is it fair to call him one of Tennessee's best recruiters during his time at Tennessee? Caleb, are both of those statements fair? Yes, it's also fair to say not promoting him may have cost former his job. He should have been the offensive coordinator in 08. Yes. Okay. He told me, he said, you never mention another school when you step in a living room because you're immediately down 14-0. Now, if somebody asks, if somebody says, what do you think about Deion Sanders at Colorado? Because they are recruiting me heavily. And I just frankly want to ask you, even if he comes out and says, he's a black guy, you're a white guy. Cause Deion himself has brought race into it. Has he not? Well, his recruits have, and I don't think his recruits got that from nowhere. They had exactly. to get that from him. Okay. So it's, it's been a talking point. I'm not just pulling stuff out of the, out of the airs. The point I want to make. So if, if they even bring that up, Say, listen, don't base it off any of that stuff. Just base it off history. Now, I don't think anybody is using racial epitaphs or personal attacks on Deion Sanders or personal attacks on any of his recruiters or ripping the city of Boulder, Colorado. But if they're saying, look at the track record, there is no track record. Then, Caleb, I got no issue with that. Do yeah, you? I agree. No, not at all. Um, and it's and, and also by the way, you have to be honest with the people you're recruiting. There is no rule against negative recruiting. 
if they want to step in there and start saying that Dion's a terrible person, he sleeps around, he's got a crack habit, I hear, and all of this, and cracks made the two appearances on the program today. Um, but if you want to just keep going on and on and on about Deion Sanders and ripping him, that's within the rules, and a lot of people do it, and a lot of people are successful at it, usually not the great ones long term. But if that's what you want to do to make a name for yourself, that's a way to go about it, and it's going to happen. Also, if Dion stays at Colorado long term, he's lying. Okay, because Dion at some point will start negatively recruiting because he'll have to. Okay, this is, you know what this reminds me of, Dave? You know when a politician runs for office and they say, I'm not going to attack my opponent. I'm just going to talk while I'm great. And then they always attack their opponent because they have to to win. Go back and say something. If, if, if Dion stays at Colorado, he's lying. What, so do you mean he's going to have to negative recruit against other yes. people? He's going to start negatively recruiting at some point if he gets Colorado to the level that he hopes to get Colorado at. And if he stays there long term, he's going to negatively recruit. That's how this is going to work. That's how this works. And, I, and, and he's going to negatively recruit the way you said Trooper Taylor does, maybe. He'll be asked about something, and he'll bring it up negatively on the other person. That's fine. I, I don't think it's well now Trooper. I, I, I don't I want to make sure I painted Trooper Taylor in the correct light. He right. wouldn't even negative recruit like he was asked about it. He would just dismiss it. But he did he did say it's understandable if a guy says, What about Deion Sanders? And and you 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 just give insight, you give information. I mean, they, I I can tell you right now that I, I can give you facts. I can say Nick Saban didn't help Alabama by his timing of his announcement. Um, I can do all those sorts of things. It doesn't mean I'm being negative about Nick Saban. Facts are facts. I, I don't believe, when I write a column, Caleb, I don't believe in positive or negative. I believe in bringing information and I believe in bringing my opinion. That is the exact approach I would take as a recruiter. If you ask me about dude, I'm gonna tell you what I think about dude but I'm not going to go in offering it up, which is maybe different from a call. Well, no, and this is, and and, and, I, and there's a great comment I'm seeing there that I actually wanted to address. There is still such thing as negative recruiting without directly negatively recruiting. And if you bring up race, like, don't you want to come play for this black head coach? That is negatively recruiting against white head coaches, isn't it? I, I, wow. You just, that, that's great. Kind of flip my thinking on that. Yeah. That's kind of the worst negative recruiting. I mean, would you rather say, is it more negative to say that uh, Colorado doesn't have the same facilities, it's cold there, uh, he has no track record, or is it worse to say you should play for me because I'm the same race as you? Which is more negative? Obviously which is the more, second which, one. Which is more off-putting? It's the latter. Exa it's the latter, easily. So the idea that he's not negative recruiting, assuming, and you and I don't believe that Jordan Seaton said the whole coach who looks like you thing out of nowhere, we think that came from the top, then he's obviously negatively recruiting. And he may not call it negatively recruiting, but he absolutely is. Now, again, you're right. There's a difference between there's direct negative recruiting that's unnecessary. You tell me, Dave, I don't know. I want to bring him up. Do you believe Lane Kiffin said what he said to Alshon Jeffrey, that you'll be pumping gas for the rest of your life if you go to South Carolina? Yes. Okay, he did. That is direct negative recruiting. That's unnecessary. <laughs> is it not fair to say that is direct negative recruiting? That is totally unnecessary. Well, but, but see, here's my thing with negative recruiting. I think it you reap what you sow, but I don't think it's against the rules. And if you want to do it, do it. No, I agree. What you don't do, <laughs> I'll bring up a guy that we just brought up before. You know what you never, never want to do? Negatively recruit against yourself. And... Derek Dooley, do you remember how much, how often he would talk about how bad a shape the program was in when he took over Tennessee? Yes. And you don't think that hurt him in recruiting? How are you supposed to go recruit to other players when you're in front of the media saying, man, we're, we're in terrible shape, guys. I got to be honest. Like, how, how do you then go to a living room and be like, oh, I, I didn't mean that when I said that? He constantly, I think that there was a moment where he said, this is like year one. Last year was year zero when he entered 2011. And I thought, Okay, this is a other. If you're trying to recruit for your school, you don't to save yourself talk about how bad your school is in the moment. No, no, very, very good point. Very good point. Uh, I think that you've got to look at the D 
Deion Sanders situation for what it is. It's fun. It's exciting. It's neat to watch. But is this going to be a real factor on the football field anytime soon? I don't think so. I don't think so. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn enjoy life better when you see better. Local vision service for LASIK, cataract surgery, and regular eye examination. That's Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. But in the end, it hasn't hurt. Um, it, it hasn't hurt Lane Kiffin, who you mentioned the Alshon Jeffrey uh, comment about. Um, he's still climbing the ladder, and I saw where he was named. We'll talk about this tomorrow. Coaches that have never won a championship. Who are the most likely to do that? He was on a list of seven by, I believe it's 247 Sports. Hasn't really hurt him. And I would imagine not to uh, – this is this is purely speculation. I would imagine Lane Kiffin is one that engages in negative re- recruiting from time to time. Yes. Yes, I think he's <laughs> – I mean, Lane Kiffin has, has publicly engaged in negative recruiting. I mean, how many shots did he take at Urban Meyer? Um, so it's not like he's hidden from the fact that he likes to negatively recruit a lot. No, and, uh, definitely. My, my problem is the whining about it and calling other recruits. And it, it strikes me as bizarre that Deion Sanders makes this statement on a podcast. Did he not think that would get out? Everything gets out. He wants it out. No, he wants it out. He wants people to think that he's all positive energy and every other coach is some jealous negative energy. That's his thing. Okay, but that leads me to the next thing. If he wants it out, Caleb, then why wouldn't you call Stephen A. Smith and get it out? My my question is, have those guys started to turn a deaf ear because the story is fun, but you don't You don't go to an amusement park and ride the same roller coaster over and over and over. I think whatever you guys think of a Stephen A. Smith or a Skip Bayless, those guys do have a journalist background, so they would probably ask a follow-up question that might make Dion a little uncomfortable. So you go on RG3, a former player's podcast, who's not going to push you on that. Same reason Cat Williams goes on Shannon Sharp's podcast and not Stephen A. Smith's. Because Shannon Sharp, I love him, but he's not a journalist. So he's not going to ask you a follow-up question. Well, I got and, I got pulled into that thing. That whole thing was bizarre. Oh, I don't know if you watched that. Was, Andy Mason real it. estate. <laughs> what? I watched it. Another one, by the way, I like him. I'm not here to hate on him, whatever you think about him politically, but Joe Rogan's podcast agenda because they know that he's not because he just likes to have conversations. He doesn't want to push back. You come with me and Dave, we're gonna push back. Like, what are you saying? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Andy Mason, realestate.com, real estate experts with over four decades combined experience in East Tennessee, best prices, best service in the Knoxville area, Andy Mason, realestate.com. That's Andy Mason, realestate.com. So the, um, the basketball balls, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and tell you that I am not too high on Dalton Connect, um, and I'm going to tell you why, because he's drawing more and more comparisons uh, to some guy named KD. Two minutes, he's Caleb Calhoun. I'm Dave Hooker off the hook. Sports Dalton Connect special. Got cataracts? We can fix that. Never miss another moment. With a little help from Drs. Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn at CCTIs, Hi, I'm Rick Terry, and we at Rick Terry Jewelry Designs pride ourselves in the highest quality craftsmanship from a family-owned business here in Knoxville for over 35 years. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we also take pride in being an affordable option for all your game day accessories, especially those fire opals. At Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, we want to be your jeweler every day and especially on game day. Go Vols! Hi, Mike Davis here with City Heating and Air, reminding you to always dare to compare. Our team provides quality local heating and air service, installation, and maintenance across East Tennessee. We use only the best equipment like American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning for your residential, new construction, or commercial needs. Honesty, dependability, and customer satisfaction have been the cornerstones of our business since 1961. City Heat and Air. Dare to compare. We believe every day is a good day to be thirsty. With free samples on draft and lots of flavors to choose from, Tennessee Cider Company prepares a hard cider that's easy to enjoy. 
Some say it's the signature cider of the South. Others say it's the cure to your craving. They all say you'll savor every sip. The area of Gatlinburg has so much to offer, and so does Tennessee Cider Company. Add us to your list for shopping and fun experiences. You'll be glad you made the trip. Find our cidery in the Mountain Mall on the Gatlinburg Parkway. Sip smart. Sip the good stuff. Sip Tennessee Cider Company. Thirsty yet? Doors open at 10 a.m. The Dave Hooker Show, represented by Banks and Jones, Tennessee's trial attorney. Play to win, banksjones.com. Uh, who's this guy? Hello, wizard. The Dave Hooker Show, Ooh. a presentation of Off the Hook Sports. What? YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and the free Off the Hook Sports app. Back to Dave Hooker. All right, why Caleb is selling Dalton Connect short. He's doing it to a large where do, you, where do you think I've ever sold Dalton Connect short? You just make stuff up on me, Dave. Just absolutely as he's turning into a Hulk. I hope you work on your light tonight. <laughs> if I don't you're know on that audio it's platform, Caleb is turning into the Hulk. There's a major <laughs> got a major lighting issue in our studio, guys. We will we will get this fixed tonight. I promise. I promise. This is a big issue. Uh he's turning green. Like the Hemp House, the premier hemp dispensary online with a wide variety, great selection, and strict standards to ensure you only receive the best in CBD or Delta products. Hemp House Chat with two T's.com. Hemp House Chat with two T's.com. Do you like that turning green thing? Like you're turning into the Hulk with Hemp I think House? You're just, I, I loved it, but I think you're just green with envy, envy about how pretty I am. Use the promo code HOOK at Hemp House and you will get 10% off. I'm telling you, it's quality. There's some crazy stuff at convenience stores and stuff. You can order it all online. Use the promo code HOOKED. That's HOOKED to get 10% off. Uh, Dalton Connect over the weekend could have dropped 35 on uh, Alabama. Had he, or, I'm sorry. Um, help me. Alabama. You got it. Alabama. Yes. Um, Alabama had he needed to. Um, that according to uh, Alabama's head coach. Uh, Nate Oates, and uh, he was he was just fantastic. Um, we talked about he's the best scorer since. I think it has to be at least uh, Allen Houston, and I'm gonna. I think it's beyond that. I think Allen Houston took a lot of shots. I think I think Dalton Connect is the best offensive player since a guy named Bernard King. And I said that last week. I think we've been a, pretty ahead of the curve. Caleb's looking at me like I'm crazy. Caleb, I think I'm ahead of the curve again. Maybe you're not with me, but I think you'll be there eventually. Am I crazy? It's hard for me to go there um, because Bernard King did everything, uh, scored from every... Bernard King could play power forward or he could play shooting guard if he wanted to. I think Dalton Connect is a pure wing. I'm not sure how much of a post-up guy he is, but he is, and he's a little bit shorter than Bernard King, but I get what you're saying. The story the other night was Dalton Connect didn't have a great shooting night. Y'all saw he was one of six from three. The, the story of Dalton Connect is when he's not shooting the ball well, what does he do? He gets takes to the free throw rack. line. Hmm? He takes it to the rack. Yeah, he takes it to the rack. And here's, But here's what helps him so much, and I've been bringing this up. Tennessee, whether it's Dalton, if it's not Dalton Connect, they have enough weapons now where somebody's going to be red hot shooting the ball from three, right? They have enough weapons. Well, yes. guess what? That's exactly what they got in this game because Viscovi finally stepped up, hit two threes. Zakai Ziegler went two of five from three. And then off the bench, Jordan Ganey comes in three of five from three with 15 points. Jemai Meshack hits a three. So even with Dalton Connect struggling, Tennessee went 10 of 28 from the three-point line, even though Connect was one of six and Josiah Jordan James was 0 of three because they have that many weapons. And Dave, here's what's crucial about this. When you have that many weapons and you force people to respect the perimeter, that clears things up for Dalton Connect to go ISO all day to get to the rack. And on top of that, you have to, you can't sell out on the perimeter the way Kentucky did last year to Tennessee because Jonas Adu is continuing to do what he needs to do down low. Had 19 points again. And I keep saying Dalton Connect is Tennessee's best player by far. And I could even agree with you that he may be Tennessee's best scorer than, than Bernard King. It, again, Allen Houston, Dale Ellis, Chris Lofton, Jordan McRae. I mean, Tennessee's had some great scores through the years. Um, but I think, again, the, the the key for all of this 
is Jonas Adu has to keep doing what he's doing. Because if Jonas Adu is still a physical force down low, then you're going to get the shooting from the outside that you want, and you're going to get the scoring from Dalton Connect. And But it, can, can, Adu's got to be able to keep this up. And he played about 25 minutes the other day. Barnes went small for a while against Alabama. I don't know if you saw that. This was the other telling story of the game. You know, Alabama likes to run. Nate Oates likes to play tempo. Barnes went small for a while. And so Awaka and Estrella didn't play that many minutes. And Barnes gave Ganey and Meshack about 40, 21 and 28 minutes each. He was going small to keep up with Bama's tempo. And it worked. So Tennessee has actually just a complete team. And don't connect. It's the best player. It's a very versatile team. Apex Apparel Group, design, brand, and market your way. Unique products to promote your business with unparalleled customer service. ApexApparelGroup.com. Uh, or just call Tyler, 919-3001, 919-3001. Of course, area code 865-919-3001. You can get your whole business uh, set up, and they'll do a great job. Uh, shirts, mugs, whatever the case uh, may be. Um, every once in a while, there is uh, someone that um, uh, posts something that is so funny, it makes me giggle, and Caleb looks at me like I'm weird. Um but Travis did it because I was giggling while Caleb was talking. Who wins in a game, of course? Nico, Connect, MJ, or Jesus? I say Jesus, but it's close. Um, <laughs> it's a good lot, Travis. Um, co connect to me makes Tennessee different. And I'm going to ask you this question. You've got one year. You've got Lofton or Connect. Who are you taking for one year? I I, I'm still taking Lofton. I'm still taking Lofton. It depends on the team that's put together, though. It does depend on the makeup of the team, to be fair. You know, but with Adu this year, I'm still taking Lofton. Okay, I'm going to strongly take Connect, and here's why. I think if you extend defensively uh, to the three-point line, you could take away uh, Chris, Chris Lofton. He doesn't have the ability nor the size to take it to the rack as easily as Dalton Connect. So I think it's Dalton Connect. And Caleb, I thought I would bring you over to this side because I really don't think it's close. I love Lofton, but let's not forget about Jawan on the other side of the court that you had to be aware of. While Tennessee is not a one-man team, don't get me wrong, that was a special pair of shooters that you had to be really scared of on on the perimeter connect to me is able to collapse defenses by himself unless he runs against a just absolute incredible on ball defender i don't think he's stoppable i think if he wants 28 points in an ncaa tournament game he's going to get 28 points in an ncaa tournament game you're thinking chris loft in his senior year when Jawan smith really emerged you're forgetting Chris Lofton, the All-American, his sophomore year when Tennessee did not have Tyler Smith. Major Wingate was their best player inside who won that great. And Dane Bradshaw was having to post up half the time and he was 6'4". And look, Connect, I mean, Lofton willed that team to the NCAA tournament in a top 10 ranking. I, the thing that's making me hard to say it, Dave, is this team is way more loaded, way more loaded than that team was. Okay, there is no Jonas Adu on that team. There is no... Heck, there's no Zakai Ziegler on that team, quite honestly. Speaking and, of, if, if you want great insight, Caleb with basketball does it because he wrote last week about how important Adu was and Mead Drinker says Adu is the biggest surprise besides Connect. And honestly, when I saw the headline and Caleb posted the story, I, I guess this was two Saturdays ago, I thought... Uh, wasn't was it connect kind of the story and um but when i read it caleb was absolutely right that's what you get it off the hook sports.com uh you you brought that up a do is another very positive surprise i mean other than i mean what has gone wrong for for tennessee other than santiago viscobi's you know personal issues where he had to go his grandmother passed away where he had to go back but i mean other than that what's what's gone wrong for this basketball team what you would have to nitpick, wouldn't you, to find an issue with this basketball team other than the big glaring one, which is Rick Barnes in the tournament. But what's wrong with this basketball team? That's the tough question I'll ask you. Absolutely nothing is wrong with this basketball team, except for front court depth. But I think they found that with J.P. Estrella, which is the big deal I wanted to bring up, too, was J.P. Estrella 
can now be effective in the front court. I think, but that's where that, and that's why I can't say connect over Chris Lofton is because connect is the best player on a loaded team. Here's the thing, Dave, if you took connect off this team, they actually have all the pieces to make a tournament run. It's just, they have all the pieces. And then you add connect who can just score at will from anywhere on the court. All of a sudden you're like, Oh my gosh, this team's incredible. And so I, I really do think that it's, it's real. Your 08 Celtics, when Kevin Garnett was the interior force and Ray Allen was a spot up shooter outside, they were both elite. They kind of gave the Celtics a complete team, but they had a complete team plus Paul Pierce who could score anywhere on the court. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that changed everything. And so you know, Paul, that's um, Paul Pierce is a goofy player, a herky jerky player, but I made the comparison. I want to repeat it uh, to Jason Tatum. I mean, I think, you, you've had a little bit of time to think about that, Caleb. Am I on base there? No, that's Tatum. a good one. Jason Tatum is a great one. I love and Connect. I think is a little bit taller too. Um, so yeah, no, Jason Tatum was a great comparison. Um, I still like my John Shire one better, but you're right because <laughs> Shire. <laughs> I well, like uh, my uh, opinion better than yours. Well, hell, Caleb, that's why it's your opinion. But no, I came around to Tatum because Shire was a better passer than Connect was, and Jason Tatum is not much of a passer. He is just a scorer, really, in the NBA. But that's fine. So I, I, I definitely see Jason Tatum very well. Um, look, this team it is this. This may be the best team Rick Barnes has coached at Tennessee, and maybe the best team he's ever coached. I, I, I don't, I don't even, I don't even think it's close. Now I'm not going to pretend to know all his Texas teams, okay? But I don't even. I don't even think it's close. I think this is by far from top to bottom. Tennessee's best basketball team under Rick Barnes. And I think it has the most star power since you got Ron Slay, who joins us on Thursdays, coming off the bench. To have Ron Slay as your sixth player, what you can help me with the year. But I think it has the most nine. star power since that group. That group did have a ton of star power, didn't it? And the funny thing was like, so many like yeah that 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 group was loaded um i could see that the now the problem is right now tennessee has just eight guys playing more than 10 minutes a game i don't know if you know that dave they have just eight guys playing more than 10 minutes a game that they got to get that up to nine or ten um they're going to otherwise their legs will give out on them in the tournament um yeah i i don't you think they have Great depth or good depth? I think they have good depth, but they don't have great depth. Now you're hoping if you're Tennessee that JP Estrella is going to start emerge because that's the, the big thing is front court depth. They need another big down low. They need one more that can, in case Adu gets in foul trouble with a tiki tack foul call game, they need one more. And that's where Estrella needs to continue to emerge. But if he doesn't, they will have an issue in March because I've seen this. I've seen this happen a thousand times, Dave, where teams that are really good in the regular season play seven or eight guys in the second leg of a suite of the second weekend it, or the second leg of the first weekend even just gives out on them and they just don't have any energy left in the tank. Okay. Here's what I want to do. Our five favorite minutes. It's how we close every show because we like to get your input because we love our community. Please support our sponsors. They're all listed right below. Um, I'll give you a, a, a for instance, a city heating and air conditioning. And when it comes to HVAC units, they can totally take care of you. And you're going to have other fly by night companies that are in like, like yellow vans around Knoxville and they want to sell you a whole new unit because it's thousands of dollars. If you want to spend thousands of dollars, you can. And that might be the direction you have to go. But with the city heating and air conditioning, they're going to make sure that that's the right assessment. It might be a part, it might be free on. That city heating and air conditioning. Our five favorite minutes. I'm I'm going to direct it a little bit. If you don't care, message board. If you if you'll trust me, I've been hosting uh, a lot of shows over the years, so I'm going to direct it more than I usually do. It's usually just about what you want to talk about. But here's what I would like. Who are you most excited about? You you probably knew if you were listening to the show that Heard was coming. You probably knew if you listened to the show that McIntyre was going to commit to Tennessee, right? Correct. Moya, I'm sorry. I said correct. I said correct. Right. Moya was a complete surprise. Um, Travis says the NFL is fixed. We might do that tomorrow. Um, Moya was a complete surprise. So 
just fill it in. Um, and I, I, type in the message board. Who are you most excited about? Because I could make a strong argument that it's Moy. Because you suddenly have a guy that kind of came out of left field is already 300 pounds. You can't coach size. I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, that he, he could come in and play right away. He could come in and play as many snaps as Hurd. I don't think that's going to be the case, but I like Hurd as a foundational player as much as an immediate fix. I could make the case, Moya. Now I know you're going to call you're you're going to call me crazy, but I'm going to throw out that out there, Rob. I know it's a tough question. You can be excited about all me drinker, but you got to pick just one. So give me answers right now, um, and and I want to hear what you you think about that. And by the way. The Dave is turning state. me into the Hulk with my anger at him saying something so ridiculous. I know. Today's tough question, by the way, was on our YouTube page, so you can vote on that. Uh, was with a monster weekend with Josh Heupel playing possum in recruiting. Yes, he knew it was coming. Got 62% of the vote. No, things just fell into place. Got 25% of the vote. No, it was all planned. Got 13% of the vote. Um. Well... I'm gonna make that. I'm gonna make the argument for Moy. I say you should be most excited about him because I I knew that Hurd and McIntyre were coming. I knew it was a matter of time. Now, let me. That's my opinion. Let me play another side because I know you're gonna play Hurd, right? And yes. You're gonna call me crazy. And you're you are on drugs. Okay. okay and I'm totally okay. cool with that crack makes its third reference of the day. Nobody's on crack. Dave is community. literally a crack hooker now. He's a crack hooker. <laughs> So not uh the it may reminds me of uh Chappelle. Um no, I love crack. <laughs> <laughs> Dave Chappelle. All right. Um so I knew McIntyre was coming. I knew Hurd was coming. Um it's it's more in my opinion, because they wowed him. You have 48 hours to wow a guy, and especially a guy that's not nearby. They did that. He was on their radar. We didn't even know about it. Um, well, I mean, we knew about it. We knew he was going to be in town, but we didn't know he was that strong into Tennessee. So, but I'm going to make the argument for McIntyre, even though I think you should be most excited about uh, Moy on this uh, Monday or whenever you're watching. I think that um, with McIntyre, you got a guy that, has at least said he's willing to sit behind uh, Nico. And I know he's a 2025 guy, but he's willing to sit behind Nico and compete with a Merklinger who is already on campus. So he's an in-state guy, which is important. Um, I could certainly make the argument for McIntyre. If something goes south with Nico and Josh Heupel, if it turns out they don't like each other and he transfers, you've got a fantastic quarterback situation sitting there. And I don't think I would hesitate. I won't hesitate in saying there are not five programs out there in the nation that have a better quarterback situation than Tennessee does right now. Okay. I'm not going to go do the research and see what Ohio state has committed in 2025. I'm sorry. They just got the Alabama transfer. Um, Yeah, that they did. That column would take too long, but I'm going to tell you right now that Tennessee's quarterback situation with what they have lined up is as good or better than anybody in the country. Give me somebody better. Okay. And Daniel brings up, and you didn't hear an $8 million NIL deal. They got McIntyre without the cash. I mean, I'm sure he got promised something. Which is actually true because you're right. When Nico's gone, they'll have a lot more NIL cash to give McIntyre some help. I can listen to McIntyre because I look the court when you weigh importance in Heupel's system, the right quarterback is like 75% of the, of, 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 of the program, right? Like everything else is 25%. The right quarterback outweighs everything else, right? Yes. Yeah. So in that regard, I give you that it's McIntyre in the sense that I think 2024 is just that crucial of a year. I still go Lance Hurd at left tackle. Because here's the thing. They put so much money to getting Nico. If Nico doesn't have the chance to be elite and a Heisman contender this year, then that's $2 million down the drain. I mean, they didn't 
they didn't risk they didn't risk less talent everywhere else for Nico to not be a Heisman guy. And it might cause the NIL advertisers. Let's not call them boosters anymore because they're advertisers. It's a business. It might cost the NIL advertisers to back off a little bit and having some hesitation because they spent so much money on Nico. So there you go. That's a great argument for Hurt. Yeah, uh, one of us, one of us will write that column today. It'll be on offer. But guys, either way, they're both better than Moy because hey, Dave, let's play a little Russian roulette. You got to put some money down. There is a one hundred percent chance that one of the three commitments is transferring after twenty twenty five or after twenty twenty four. Excuse me, after twenty twenty four, they're either McIntyre flips to somewhere else, Moy transfers or Herd transfers. Who? And I'm telling you that one of the one of the three is going to happen. I, I'm not saying one of the three is going to happen, guys. I'm saying hypothetically, if there's a hundred percent chance one of the three is going to happen, where are you putting your money? Yeah, you got to bet that one of the three is going to do what again? That either Moy transfers at, at in December of 2024, in December of 2024, before the early signing period, let's say that, or when the, when the portal window is open, either Moy transfers, Herd transfers, or McIntyre flips his commitment. Which of the three is most likely? Heard. You're, you're you're crazy. It's Moy. Moy will transfer before Heard does. Yeah, because he's transferred before. And, uh, he switched high schools, and he's transferred now from LSU to Tennessee. So I'll say that he's willing to move. All right, guys. Fantastic show. Uh, Caleb, you're the best. I'm Dave Hooker. Off the Hook Sports. Hit like and subscribe. We appreciate you. Growing community. You're phenomenal. Weekdays, 10 a.m. We join you right here. For Caleb, I'm Dave. Have a fantastic day, night, evening, morning, whenever you're listening off the hook sports.